Hi there. So having spent the last six months in nothing but the Old Testament in our Proverbs studies and our Through the Bible in One Year chronologically, so we're in the Old Testament and will be for some time to come, I find myself missing the New Testament. So I'm drawn to do a study on Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans, which is very much like Paul's letter to the Americans. Okay. The Roman government in its latter days is very much like America now. Same law, same rules, same problems. And this could be written to us. So let's jump into Romans and we'll play around in Romans for the next couple days. Just as a separate study, okay? Okay, and we're using the Holman Christian Standard Bible, which is a newer translation. In fact, one of the newest, but... And they strive to make it in in the American language. Holman is the oldest is the oldest um, Bible publisher in America. They were started in the seventeen forties. Okay, been around for a long, long time. So this is a newer translation. One of the ones I found that is, and they strive to be absolutely accurate, but use language that's used today. So great Bible, and we have other. Bibles, we can compare them to if we have questions. So let's begin. And it starts with his greeting, as always. <clears throat> Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle and singled out for God's good news, which he promised long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was a descendant of David according to the flesh, and who has been declared to be the powerful Son of God by the resurrection from the dead according to the Spirit of holiness. We have received grace and apostleship through him to bring about the obedience of faith among all nations. On behalf of his name, including yourselves, who also belong to Jesus Christ by calling. To all who are in Rome, or America, loved by God, called as saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Very similar, okay? Now this is Paul's desire to visit Rome, which we know... Once he finally did get to Rome, they threw him in prison for years and then eventually executed him because he was a Roman citizen. He didn't get crucified. <clears throat> First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because of you, because the news of your faith is being reported in all the world. For God, whom I serve with my spirit in telling the good news about his son, is my witness that I constantly mention you, always asking in my prayers that if it is somehow in God's will, I may now at last succeed in coming to you. For I want very much to see you, so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, that is, to be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. Now this part is funny. <laughs> now I want you to know, brothers, that I often planned to come to you, but was prevented until now, in order that, that I might have a fruitful ministry among you, just as among the rest of the Gentiles. <laughs> and I read, listen to this, verse 14. I am obligated both to Greeks and barbarians, both to the wise and the foolish, so I'm eager to preach the good news to you. <laughs> also, who are in Rome. <laughs> I just find that funny. <laughs> I'm obligated to both Greeks and barbarians, both to the wise and the foolish, so I'm eager to preach the good news to you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, the righteous who live by faith. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. For, for in it God's righteousness is revealed from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. And that's, that's out of Habakkuk. Hmm? The guilt of the Gentile world. Let's see if this doesn't sound familiar. For God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who, by their unrighteousness, suppress the truth, since what can be known about God is evident among them. But God has shown it, because God has shown it to them. Okay, Now in America, God and Christian is very evident. It's everywhere. You can't live in America and not have heard about Jesus. It's just not possible. Okay because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, that is, his 
His eternal power and divine nature have been, cl have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood <clears throat> through what he has made ever as a res through what he has made. Yeah, being understood through what he has made. Okay, it's all God's creation. As a result, people are without excuse. Yeah, that. For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Got that? Instead, their thinking became nonsense and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, reptiles, <clears throat> TV stars, rock stars. Right? Rich people with no sense. Okay? The list goes on and on. Therefore, God delivered them Therefore, God delivered them over in the, in the cravings of their hearts to sexual impurity so that their bodies were degraded among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served something created instead of the Creator, who is praised forever. Amen. Now well, listen to this, written about a thousand, fifteen hundred years ago, sixteen hundred years ago, whenever, a long time ago. <laughs> This is why God delivered them over to the to degrading passions. For even their females exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The males in the same way also left natural relations with females and were inflamed in their lust for one another. Males committed shameless acts with males and received in their own persons the appropriate penalty for their error. Okay. Hard to believe this was written so long ago, huh? And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a worthless mind to do what is morally wrong. They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they know full well God's just sentence, those that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Wow, what's this about pride? Hmm. Yeah, that's just... <clears throat> and could these be today's headlines? They absolutely could. Right? Right. This is amazing. I almost want to read this again, so let's read it again. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a worthless mind to do what is morally wrong. They are filled with unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, mm -hmm. undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they know full well God's just sentence, and they do, they, um, they, uh, I've heard people openly, I'm going to hell and I can't wait to get there. Really? <laughs> that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Wow. And that's just chapter one. I mean, this can be written, Paul's letter to the Americans, right? Okay, chapter two. God's righteous judgment. Therefore, any one of you who judges, who judges is without excuse. For when you judge another, you condemn yourself, since you, the judge, do the same things. <laughs> no one is righteous, right? It says that in here somewhere. We know that God's judgment on those who do such things is based on the truth. Do you really think any one of you who judges those who do such things yet do the same, that you will escape God's judgment? Now, he's not talking about Christians. This is a letter to Romans, to those who aren't saved. They should know better, okay? And there are judges here who have no business judging anybody because they do the same things. And there's pictures of them doing the same things. Okay? Do you really think anyone who judges those who do, who do such things yet do the same that you will escape God's judgment? 
or do you despise the riches the riches of his kindness restraint and patience not recognizing that god's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance but because of your hardness and unrepentant heart you are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath when god's righteous judgment is revealed he will repay each one according to his works eternal life to those who by persistence in doing good seek glory honor and immortality but wrath and indignation to those who are self-seeking and disobey the truth but are obeying unrighteousness affliction and distress for every human being who does evil first to the Jew and also to the Greek but glory honor and peace for everyone who does what is good first to the Jew and also to the Greek there is no favoritism with God you got that there is no favoritism with God I like that <clears throat> all those who sin all those who sin without the law will also perish without the law and all those who sinned under the law will be judged by the law for the hearers of the law are not righteous before God, but the doers of the law will be declared righteous. So when Gentiles who do not have the law instinctively do what the law demands, they are a law, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts. Their consciences confirm this. Their competing thoughts will either accuse or excuse them on the day when God judges what people have kept secret according to my gospel through Jesus Christ Jesus so there are people I mean the Romans back then they didn't have the Ten Commandments okay that was the law back then and God added to it and added a lot of other things but the basic law was the Ten Commandments and there are people who are just morally good people you know you still won't get to heaven without Jesus but the morally good people will be judged some people automatically think it's wrong to kill it's wrong to murder it's wrong to dishonor your parents it's wrong to covet other people other man's wives and stuff you know <clears throat> and and those are the ones you know so when, when gentiles who do not have the law instinctively do what the law demands they are a law to themselves even though they do not have the law okay now it's going to get into how we are excused from the law being saved in the following chapters Okay. 17 now if you call yourself a Jew and the rest of the and and rest in the law boast in God know his will and approve the things that are superior being a structure from the law and if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind a light to those in darkness an instructor of the arrogant of the ignorant a teacher of the immature having the full expression and knowledge of truth in the law you then who teach another <laughs> yeah don't teach yourself you who preach you must not steal do you steal you who say you must not commit adultery do you commit adultery you detest idols do you rob his their temples you who boast in the law do you dishonor God by breaking the law for it is written the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you he's talking to the Jews here they watch them break their own laws and they watch them do everything they say is wrong right the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you what's that little note there Isaiah hmm. interesting huh be a good example <laughs> they're being bad examples circumcision of the heart for circumcision benefits you if you observe the law but if you are a lawbreaker your circumcision has become uncircumcision therefore if an uncircumcised man keeps the law's requirements will his uncircumcision not be counted as circumcision a man who is physically uncircumcised but who fulfills the law will, will judge you who are a lawbreaker in spite of having the letter of the law in circumcision for a person is not a Jew who is one who is one outwardly a true circumcision is not something visible in the flesh on the contrary a person is a Jew who is who is one inwardly and circumcision is of the heart by the spirit not the letter the man's praise is not from men of God but from God okay 
Now, they, it was a very big thing to be circumcised. All Jews were circumcised back then when they were eight days old. Okay, and some adult males, when they converted to, to Judaism, were you know to, to the Jewish tradition were circumcised. It sounds very painful to me. But. And most Americans now are circumcised. I was circumcised at eight days old. Never knew the difference. Okay, so will we can we be considered Jews? Because we follow the law? Maybe. Okay. Let's keep going. I'm going to try and make this about a half hour. So. Okay. Chapter 3. So what is advantage does the... So what advantage does a Jew have? Or what is the benefit of circumcision? Considerable in every way. First, they were entrusted with the spoken words of God. What then if some did not believe, will their unbelief cancel God's faithfulness? Absolutely not. God must be true, even if everyone is a liar, as it is written, though you may be justified in your words and triumph when you judge. That you. <clears throat> okay, the Jews were entrusted with the spoken words of God. Okay. Amazing. But if our unrighteousness highlights God's righteousness, what are we to say? I use a human argument. Is God's righteousness to inflict wrath? Absolutely not. Otherwise, how will God judge the world? But if by my but if by my lie God's truth is amplified to his glory, why am I also still judged as a sinner? And why not say, just as some people slanderously claim we say, let's do what is evil so that good may come. Their condemnation is deserved. There's lots of people that do evil just to show you what good is. You know? I'll show you what not to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. The whole world guilty before God. Here you go. What then? Are we any better? Not at all. He's talking about Jews. For we have previously charged that both Jews and Gentiles are all under sin as it is written. There is, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. All alike have become useless. There is there is no one who does what is good, not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They deceive with their tongues. Viper's venom. Viper's venom is under their lips. And this is from Psalms. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and wretchedness are in their paths. And the path of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Okay. The world in general is just like this. Okay. Now we know that whatever the law says speaks to those who are subject to the law. So that every mouth may be shut and the whole world may become subject to God's judgment. For no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law, because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. Okay? No one is righteous. Okay? Only one way to heaven, right? That's Jesus. Okay. God's righteousness through faith. But now, apart from the law, God's righteousness has been revealed, attested by the law in the prophets. That is, God's righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. Get that? To all who believe, since there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. 23 and 20. 23 is very famous. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now they use that for... This verse is used a lot for, um, for witnessing to people. Okay? All have sinned and fallen short of the word. No one is going to get to heaven without Jesus. Mm -hmm. So it's the famous verse for witnessing to the unsaved. They're justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God presented him as a as a propitiation. That's a weird word, huh? As a propitiatory sacrifice or as an offering of atonement as propitiation through faith in his blood to demonstrate his righteousness because in 
because in his restraint God passed over the sins previously committed. God presented him to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so that he would be righteous and declared righteous, the one who has faith in Jesus. That's us. We will be declared. We will be righteous and be declared righteous if we have faith in Jesus. Otherwise, you are not getting into heaven. Okay? Boasting excluded. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By one of works? No. On the contrary, by law of faith. For we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is, or is, or is God for Jews only? Is he not also for Gentiles? Yes, for Gentiles too. That's us. Since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith, do we then cancel the law through faith? Absolutely not. On the contrary, we uphold the law. All right? You can't not. So we're at 20 minutes. Can we try another chapter? Hmm? Chapter 4. We'll stop at chapter 4. Right. Abraham justified by faith. What then can we say that Abraham, our physical ancestor, has found? If Abraham was justified by works, he has nothing to brag about. But not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him for righteousness, as righteousness, I'm saying. Not to Genesis. Now to the one who not to the one who works. Pay is not considered as a gift, but something owed. But the one who does not work, but believes on him who declares the ungodly to be righteous, his faith is credited for righteousness. Hmm? Now to the one who works, pay is not considered a gift, as a gift, but something owed. But the one who does not work, but believes on him who declares the ungodly to be righteous, his faith is credited for righteousness. Who acquits or who justifies. That's interesting. Verse 6. Likewise, David also speaks for the blessing of the man. God credits righteousness to apart from works. Okay, this is how joyful are those whose lawless acts are forgiven and whose sins are covered. How joyful is the man the Lord will never charge with sin. That's probably Psalms. I knew that, huh? Abraham justified before circumcision. <laughs> Abraham wasn't circumcised. Is this blessing only for the circumcised then, or is it also for the uncircumcised? For we say, faith was credited to Abraham for righteousness. In what, in what way then was it credited? While he while he was circumcised or uncircumcised, not while he was circumcised, but uncircumcised, and he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of, of the righteousness that he had by faith. While still uncircumcised, that was to make him the father of all who believe but are not circumcised, so that righteousness may be credited to them also. And and he became the father of the circumcised, who are not only circumcised, but who also followed the footsteps of the faith of our father Abraham had while he was still uncircumcised. Okay. Okay, now in the in the Jewish faith they use the circumcision as a crutch. You I'm circumcised, so I'm saved and I'm part of God's family. And, and they said, If you're not circumcised, you're not one of us. It's very you know. I didn't like Gentiles, not even a little. To this day, uh, many Jews don't don't want anything to do with the Gentiles, and they use circumcision as a as a crutch and a weapon for that. But Abraham was not circumcised, and he was, and he's the one they called the father of the nations. Hmm? The promise kind of to faith. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants that he would inherit the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. If those, if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made empty and the promise is canceled. For law produces wrath, and where there is no law, there is no transgression. Mm. Some people are very hung up on the law. Okay. Then why is the promise... This is why the promise is by faith, so that it may be according to grace to guarantee it to all the descendants, not only those who are of the law, but also those who are of Abraham's faith. He is the father of us all in God's sight, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. 
He believed in God, who gives life to the dead and calls things into existence that do not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what had been spoken. So will your descendants be. He, he considered his own body to be already dead since he was about a hundred years old, before he had Isaac, and also considered the deadness of Sarah's womb without weakening in the faith. He did not waver in unbelief at God's promise, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, because he was fully convinced that he that what he had promised he was also able to perform. Therefore it was credited to him for righteousness. Now it was credited to him now now it was credited to him was not written for Abraham alone, but also for us. It would be credited to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He he was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Wow. So that's cool. So yeah, Abraham, he was a hundred. Sarah was ninety. They could never have children and their whole they had already probably already been married for, you know, eighty years or seventy years or something like at least. And they just knew that, you know, they couldn't have children. Sarah was boom, and Sarah was barren, and they just couldn't have children, and they accepted that. But when an angel came down and, you know, God told them, you will have nation, you will have children and be the father of many nations, he believed him. He just says, okay, if you say so, I believe you, I have faith. That was credited to him as righteousness because he had the faith when God told him that you will have kids, even in his old age, and become the father of many nations. He believed that. So that's the first four chapters of Romans. I'm going to start with five. Five's a great chapter. But we'll do that tomorrow. But there you go. Just a, a study in Romans, just to have some, some New Testament. And Romans is speaking to us, directly to us Gentiles. So, you know, like I said, the the governments in, in Rome and the way they ran their government is very similar to the way we're running our government now, following the same path downhill, unfortunately. But God's there. God will be there. So so that's our Roman study. We'll we'll do some more of this tomorrow evening. You know, I'm just kinda anxious to get back talking about Jesus again because I've been doing so much Old Testament stuff, doing the Bible in a year and studying Proverbs every day. I find I was missing Jesus and missing the resurrection and stuff. So we're gonna do this too as a third study. So enjoy that. We'll continue tomorrow. Until then, keep the faith. <laughs>